So let's talk about how to get huge credit limits on your credit cards. And I'm not talking about $10,000 or $15,000. I'm talking about $25,000 and higher. How do you get there and what steps do you take? In this video, I'm going to talk about my own personal experiences that got me multiple high limit credit cards so that you can apply these strategies to your own credit card setups and hopefully get higher limits on your credit cards as well. When we take into consideration the specific strategies that I'm going to go over in this video, it's important to realize that if you just started on your credit card journey, this is more of a long term approach that will take time and patience. As you get your first credit card and start developing a good payment history and a positive relationship with your bank, getting higher limits will become much easier over time as your income grows and as your credit card portfolio expands. I also want to point out that this video is completely based on my own personal experiences. And so as always, your mileage may vary. This is not financial advice and this information is for entertainment purposes only. So with that being said, let's jump right in. The first concept that's really important to understand doesn't even have to do with credit cards, and that's understanding income and debt and how it plays a role in credit limit increases. Although your credit score does play a big factor in this, I would argue that your debt to income ratio is an even more important factor when banks decide to extend more credit to you, whether it be in the form of a loan or an increase to your existing credit card limit. Your debt to income ratio is defined as your monthly debt payments divided by your gross monthly income and then multiplied by 100%. There are tons of ways to interpret this, but in general, a DTI that is less than 35% is considered to be good. But just like the way we define good credit utilization as less than 30%, we want to be much lower than that if possible. And that brings us to our first strategy, which is lowering your debt to income ratio by either increasing your income, lowering your debt, or doing a combination of both. So if we first look at income, there are multiple ways to go about doing this. The easiest way is to make sure that when you're applying for a credit limit increase, that you include your household income. Your household income is defined as the income brought into your home by you, your family members, and any others who live with you, provided that they are above a certain age, usually 15 years or older. And so make sure to include other members in your household when listing the income on either your credit card application or your credit limit increase application. It should be no surprise that it's easier to get larger credit limit increases when you list your household income as compared to just your own individual income. Of course, other ways to increase your income personally is to get a promotion at work, start a side hustle, or start investing in what hopefully is an appreciating asset. Next, you want to make sure to lower your debt as much as possible. For example, make sure to pay for things in full and to avoid any buy now or pay later products. But if you're watching this video, debt is probably not much of a concern for you, so we're just going to leave it at that. Once you have higher income and low debt, you have a low debt to income ratio, and you're now seen as a less risky borrower to the banks, meaning that you're more likely to be able to pay off higher balances and less likely to default on any loans. And so now you're in the position to get higher credit limit cards, but how specifically do you do that? Well, we're going to cover that in the next step, which is to increase our credit limit gradually, moving from one credit limit tier to the next. Now, when I say credit limit tier, this is a subjective tier that you set for yourself, depending on what your starting credit limits are. For example, when I first started getting credit cards, the cards that I opened had a credit limit of around $1,500 on each card. So that was what I considered to be my starting tier. I then set my next credit card tier to be around $3,000, which was about twice as much as my starting tier. So my goal was to get all my starter cards to this next credit limit level. As your income increases, there are two ways to do this. The first way is to apply for a new credit card, which will come with its own credit limit that hopefully is close to that $3,000 mark that you set for yourself or even higher. This is probably the more common approach since getting a new credit card will get you more value since you're probably getting a nice signup bonus as well. The second way, which is what I did, is to ask for multiple manual credit limit increases on your existing cards to move up credit limit tiers. Now, of course, you can do both at the same time, but you just have to be mindful of the number of hard pulls that will be generated on your credit report if you decide to do both. But if you have American Express or Bank of America, requesting a CLI usually only results in a soft pull. Sorry, Chase fans, you're out of luck. They hard pull everything. Once you get your credit limits to the $3,000 tier, you can then set your sights on your next tier. For example, $6,000, then $15,000, and then $25,000. And those were the numbers I used as goals for my own credit limit tiers as time went on. At the smaller credit limit levels, it's not too hard to do this by asking for manual CLIs. And bonus tip, if you couple this whenever you get an income increase, it makes for a good reason to ask for one as well. 
What you'll begin to notice is as you move up through these credit limit tiers, when you apply for a new card, the credit limit usually matches the tier that you're in, especially if you get a card within the same issuer as your previous cards. So for example, when my cards were in the $6,000 tier, when I applied for a new credit card, the limit for that new card was usually around $6,000. And when I was in the $15,000 tier, my new credit cards usually had a credit limit of around $15,000. And so that's the idea behind credit limit tiers. And I recommend that each tier be somewhere between two or three times the amount of the previous tier as a reasonable goal to be set. Another important part of this strategy is to do this with multiple cards within the same bank system. This will set you up well when we talk about the third part of the strategy, which is going to involve transferring or reallocating credit card limits, which can only really be done with cards within a single credit card issuer. Now, not all issuers let you do this, but larger banks such as American Express and Chase Bank are two great examples of banks that allow you to move credit limits from one card to another. And this is so powerful. So let me show you specifically how I was able to propel my credit limits over $35,000. If you watched my last video where I revealed my entire credit card portfolio, you'd know that I have two credit cards with Chase, the Chase United Explorer card and the Chase Marriott Bonvoy Bold card. But what I didn't reveal was that at one point, I also had a Chase Southwest priority card. Now at the time that I applied for the Southwest card, my United card had a credit limit of $25,000 and my Marriott card also had a credit limit of $25,000. As a matter of fact, pretty much all of my credit cards were at or around $25,000 at that point in time. And so my credit limit tier at that time was $25,000. And as we covered in the last section, if you keep all your credit limits across all your cards around the same credit limit tier, ideally you should expect that any new cards that you apply for will be around that same limit. And this certainly was the case with my Southwest Priority Card, which was approved for a $29,000 credit limit. So I used this card over the next year and it was okay. But during this year, I also got the American Express Platinum card. And for me, this was just a better option to buy flights. So ultimately, I decided to cancel my Southwest Priority card after the first year. But I didn't just cancel this card. I did another thing too. And this is key if your goal, like me, was to have multiple high limit credit cards. When I called customer service to cancel my card, I also asked if I could reallocate my existing credit limit to my other cards. The customer service rep confirmed that I could do that, but I had to leave $500 behind. That meant that I could reallocate $28,500 to my other credit cards. And so here's what I did. I put $15,000 of that credit limit onto my Chase United Explorer card. So now I had a total of $40,000 in credit limit. And I put the remaining $13,500 of that credit limit onto my Chase Marriott Bonvoy Bold card. So now it had a total of a $38,500 in credit limit. So you can see what's going on here. Why would I give up thousands of dollars of credit limit by canceling a card when I could just keep that limit and shift it to other cards, boosting their total credit limits as well? The benefit of this is that now these new higher credit limit credit cards will report to the credit bureaus. And if I were to apply for a new credit card, banks will certainly take notice and hopefully approve me for a equally high, if not higher credit limit, if I were to apply for a new credit card. And just in case you're curious, Yes, I did consider putting that entire credit limit onto one card, which would have boosted my highest credit limit to $52,500, but I decided to split it evenly instead. So now that my credit cards were in a new tier of around $40,000, the plan was now to elevate the rest of my credit card limits to this new credit limit tier by asking for manual credit limit increases. And so over the next nine months or every three months, I increased my Amex Blue Cash Everyday card from $25,000 to $35,000, I increased my Bank of America customized cash card from $25,000 to $40,000, and I increased my Bank of America Premium Rewards Elite card from $30,000 to $40,000. So let's quickly recap our strategy here. Number one, you want to understand income, debt, and your DTI ratio and how it affects your ability to get credit limit increases. The higher your income and the lower your debt, the easier it becomes to be successful in getting the credit limit increases you want. Number two, Set goals for your credit limit tier and choose cards within two to three issuers that you know are okay with reallocating credit limits. When you start, it's very common to have credit limits between $500 to $6,000. Most likely, your first three to five credit cards will have credit limits that are very close in size, and so I would set the next credit limit tier maybe around two to three times what your current level is. For example, if your starting card limits are around $3,000, I would set a goal between $6,000 and $9,000. 
If your starting card limits are around $6,000, I would set a goal between $12,000 and $18,000. Also, don't be afraid to take some time to garden, increase your income, lower your debt, and at the same time request manual credit limit increases to move all your cards up to the next tier. And finally, number three, we're going to reallocate credit limits between cards in order to continue to boost our credit limits into the next tier and ultimately get huge credit limits. At this point, you probably have cards that aren't really doing much for you. And now we can take these cards, cancel them, and put the leftover credit limits onto other cards within the same issuer that we actually care about. Once you move one or two cards into the next tier in this way, it's perfectly fine to then follow that up with manual credit limit increases on your other cards. Bonus points if you do this with an issuer that only does a soft pull. And so those are three specific strategies that you can use to get huge credit limits on your cards. Just as a reminder, this strategy will take years to complete as you need to increase your income along with your credit limits, and patience is going to be important as well. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been trying to get higher limits on your credit cards. This is definitely a hot topic in the credit card community, so I'm interested to hear what your experiences are. And since you made it to the end of the video, definitely check out this video here that I know you'll enjoy.